guys, what's happening? It's Jake from JTS Cosplay back here with a, another video, something a bit different today, uh, a tutorial on how to use XTC 3D. So if you're not familiar with XTC 3D, um, it is mainly used for smoothing out um, 3D prints, mainly PLA, filament. Uh, but anyway, what you do um, is you pretty much mix up this two-part epoxy uh, resin and then you sort of just brush it onto your model, um, your printed part. For me, I like to sand my parts first, so just they have that extra uh, bit of uh, filed down the layer line so the uh, resin itself can seep into the shallow parts and um, give you that real smooth smooth finish that you want at the end once you start sanding. So when you finish printing a 3D print it does have a lot of layer lines um, even at the finest setting if you do take sandpaper to it you will quickly see that it's not smooth uh, and you'll see the layer lines where there's sort of, because it prints per layer, even at 0.2 millimeters at layers, you'll see where it's sort of in between each layer, there's a bit of inconsistency, so it will give this sort of consistent but bumpy surface um, if you do put paint on it or sand it. So what this does is it self levels. So once you brush it on or put it on with the foam brush, uh, it will self level itself to whatever you are painting it on and it will seep into all those shallow parts so once you sand it some of it is already filled in and instead of sanding it all back into a base level of where it's completely smooth you're actually filling in those shallow parts and then you sand on top and that just really reduces the amount of sanding and work time that you have to do so this is an amazing product um, I'm not affiliated with smooth on in any way I just want to show you guys how you can use this um, and how you can really benefit from this uh, I've seen a lot of negative or well, not a lot but some negative reviews of people saying um, that it, they didn't like it and stuff like that and 100% some people do not like certain products but I think uh, a lot of that is the misuse of this and yeah just not using it properly uh, it does need to be put on in thin layers I usually do around two um, but one is usually enough if you want to do some primer filler and some more sanding um, but I just find it's easy enough to do two layers uh, and yeah so what I'm gonna do today guys is I've got a few prints behind me that I'm going to sand first with some 80 grit or 100 grit sandpaper get that nice and sanded and then um, wash that all off all the dust and then I'm just gonna show you guys how I go about using XCC 3D um, there's probably a bunch of ways you can do it but I'm just gonna show you the way that works for me um, but yeah let's just get into it so as I said, all the pieces have been sanded with 120 grit sandpaper just to knock off the top of those layer lines and help the uh, XCC 3D seep in a bit more. This is a print that has not been sanded at all. It's fresh off the print bed. I just wanted to do that to show you guys what it actually does when you do sand before adding this stuff. It really makes a huge difference in the post processing of these prints to make them all smooth and nice. So the first thing I want to do is put down a sheet of aluminium foil uh, just to protect your workspace otherwise it, if the resin does get on your cutting mat or your workbench it will stick. The next thing I like to do is use a aluminium foil little bowl just make that like cut out a little piece and roll up the edges just to house your resin once it's mixed because if you leave it in the measuring cup where it is dense it will cure quicker because it cures through heat and the more dense it is the more heat it will conduct. So this epoxy resin is a part A and part B. It is mixed 2A to 1B by volume and that's what I am doing. I am using a measuring cup which has increments by 5 milliliters. So I'm only going to do uh, 15 milliliters all up so that means I need 10 milliliters of part A and 5 milliliters of part B. Uh, you gotta make sure to shake up your bottles as well just to make sure it's thoroughly mixed. Also, I don't have gloves on yet, but make sure to wear your gloves. It's very sticky stuff if you do get it on your skin and it's tricky to get off.
Another thing I like to add to my XTC 3D while I'm mixing it is a polyurethane red pigment. All it does is because the resin when it uh, is mixed it comes out transparent so all it does it gives it a bit of a pigment so you can see what you're brushing and how thick it is and it's just really good for telling you how much you're putting on. So once you've got your A and B parts both put into your measuring cup, you just want to grab a little bit of that um, pigment and just mix that nicely, making sure to scrape all the sides, scrape the bottom. Uh, don't really miss out on any, any little bits that might be left behind as you really want that proper mixing, mixing ratio. I really like to use a foam brush when applying uh, this epoxy resin to my prints as I think it does give the smoothest appearance. I've used um, paint brushes before, just cheap ones, keep that in mind, and they have given me brush lines, so I do prefer to use these foam brushes. So once your epoxy is all mixed up, your XTC 3D, you want to pour it in um, and then just grab your foam brush, grab a piece with your gloves on, and remember the gloves, and you just want to apply it very thin. XTC 3D goes a long way. You do not need much at all. And I think that's where people do go a little bit wrong because they put it on too thick and they lose a lot of their detail. So talking about detail, see that little crevice there? What you want to do when using XTC 3D so it doesn't pull up in those little crevices and make, make you lose all your details, is you only want to put uh, resin in there once your brush is sort of exhausted and it doesn't have doesn't have much resin on it. If you do it straight after dipping, it's going to leave a whole lot of epoxy in there and you're not going to get that fine detail that you got from your printer. So what I like to do is once my brush is a bit dry, I like to just go in there and wipe out any excess. And once it's curing as, as well, if I see that there's any excess, I'll go in there after and uh, pretty much just remove all that just to keep that detail. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that to all the pieces that I have printed, just making sure to do a thin layer and not have any pooling anywhere. Just keep an eye on all your different prints. This is why I like to do it thin. So the cure time for XTC 3D is two hours. So once that two hours is up, you can handle all these prints. It's pretty completely dry to touch. I have a few little things on there that have come off the foam brush, I think, um, just cause it's a bit cheap, but they're pretty easy to knock off just with a fingernail. This is the print that has no sanding. So see how it's shiny still. It's because it hasn't really soaked in, which can work to your advantage if you are after that. 
Also guys, a quick tip, um, if you are using a measuring cup or something like this, you can pretty much reuse it. Just let the resin in there cure the stuff that you didn't use and sort of just peel it off the edges and you should be able to get it out and just reuse that cup. This is super helpful if you're doing layers so you don't have to run through heaps of measuring cups. So now I'm going to go ahead and put on a second coat, but I'm not going to show you that because you just seen it, but I will see you then. So here they are with their second coat. Obviously they are a bit darker because of the pigment in the red, uh, but what you can see here is they are a bit shiny as it is the second coat, but I'm going to show you now just with a bit of 120 grit sandpaper that if you do sand it, you'll see the layer lines have been reduced by a lot. If you do two thin layers, this is the result that you should be getting. With a bit more sanding, I can see how that would be almost smooth and barely need primer filler. But now I just want to show you quickly the piece that I didn't do any sanding on first. Uh, and I'm sanding this is just as much as the, as the chest piece, but the layer lines are a lot more visible. So it's definitely worth it guys to pre-sand it doesn't take long and you're just going to save time in the end anyway so that's it guys thank you for watching i really do hope this does help you if you decide to pick up some xcc 3d and use it um just like i said in the beginning it is something that needs to be used correctly for it to work um and definitely sanding as you can see um by this one if you do sand it first, uh, it does give a better result than just going straight onto a PLA and it doesn't take that long to do one pass of sanding um, on these. It doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, but yeah, once you sand these back, you can pretty much put on primer filler, body filler, paint, whatever, if it's up to your standard. Uh, but yeah, just sort of go, go at your own pace and you know, do do what works for you. My way is probably not the most perfect way. I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this that have their way. If you did enjoy the video, definitely um, think about leaving a like or subscribing. I'm planning on having a bunch more videos out like this, some maybe about um, finishing a 3D print without XTC 3D. So yeah, if you're interested in something like that, guys, definitely hit the subscribe button. Uh, but until next time, see you guys later.